Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm outside my door in my backyard in the Appalachian Mountains of Southwest Virginia at about 2,700 feet here. And behind me is the ideal habitat for the subject of today's episode, which is the incredible spring salamander. It's called the spring salamander, and I'll get into that in a minute. I'm crouching down because these are some springs that are here underneath a canopy of rhododendron and hemlock. The hemlock is dying off because the hemlock woolly adelgid. And for some reason, I've got a couple acres of rhododendron that's dying here too. And I've checked on that with the National Forest Service, but that's another story. Today's episode is going to be about the spring salamander. I'm going to give you six facts about this an amazing species. This is really a very interesting and unique and one of the largest lungless plethodons that you can find in the Appalachian Mountains. So stay tuned for six facts about the amazing spring salamander. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. So I'm going to begin this episode with fact number one and break down the scientific name. The scientific name of this organism is Gyrinophilus porphyricticus. From the Greek, gyrino means tadpole and philus means loving. So it means tadpole loving. And it gets its name because the length of the time it spends as a larva in the water. The second part of its scientific name refers to a reddish purple color or brown color in which it exhibits as an adult. Fact number two plays into its common name and where it lives. So it's called a spring salamander because it lives in springs, in caves, and first order streams. It likes really small streams bubbling up out of springs that have super clear water, cool, shaded, high oxygen. It's a requirement for this species. And so it's called the spring salamander because it's often found in springs and has very, very specific and narrow habitat requirements for it to exist. Fact number three, the spring salamander is one of the largest of the plethodon salamanders. All of the plethodon salamanders are lungless. So that makes it even more interesting about the size this organism can achieve without lungs. It's also one of the largest of the stream-dwelling salamanders. So unlike lizards and snakes, salamanders have a very moist, sensitive skin. Only more so for the lungless species, as you can imagine, because they have to breathe through their skin. So always tell people it's super important to wash your hands before you handle them, uh, to take off any detergents or soaps or oils that might be on your hands, and also wet your hands before you touch them so you can touch them safely and not disturb that very, very sensitive skin that all lungless salamanders have. Fact number four. These salamanders have a very wide range across the East Coast, from the Southern Appalachians all the way up to the Rondacks and up into Canada. But it doesn't mean that you can actually find them everywhere. They're very isolated in this range, and so there's pockets of them where they can find this habitat, the stream water, the cave, the springs, highly oxygenated, cool, shaded, and pollution-free. So while they have a very a wide range, it's sometimes it's hard to find them, and they exist in isolated pockets through that range, not evenly distributed through it. In fact, in Connecticut, it's listed as a threatened species due to habitat destruction and also runoff and pollutants and fertilizers and pesticides from farm and agricultural areas. So that makes this salamander a really good indicator of environmental water quality. So I'm really pleased that I've got spring salamanders here because that means this water behind me is in really, really good shape. Fascinating fact number five. These salamanders are actually cannibals. They will eat members of their own species that are smaller than themselves, as well as other salamanders. 
They do eat a wide range of aquatic invertebrates, crayfish, insects, mayflies, stoneflies, leeches, slugs, and any small invertebrates they can find. But they'll also eat salamanders, even of their own kind, that are smaller than themselves. In some places, biologists have observed that the spring salamanders feed primarily on other salamanders. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Fascinating fact number six. These salamanders have one of the longest larval stages of any of the salamanders here on the East Coast. They may live in the stream as a larval stage for between three and six years, depending on temperature regimes and the amount of food. The average is somewhere around four to five, but they may stay in that larval stage up to six years before they metamorphosize into a reproductive adult. So again, this ties into habitat quality. Without consistent, from year to year, good quality water, this species can't survive. So you can recognize this salamander by its kind of song, I call it a, a salmon color or a pinkish purple kind of color, very heavy bodied. And if you look, you see a strongly keeled tail. And if you find it in this kind of habitat, they usually live very close to water, but they'll migrate away while it's raining and feed on the forest floor, primarily nocturnal. They'll get, find, get underneath a log or a rock where you may find one. In fact, I found that this one by flipping over a piece of aluminum. Check out my video on flipping pieces of aluminum and how you can put habitat in your yard to attract reptiles and amphibians. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. You know I love salamanders, and if you love salamanders, I'm developing a pretty extensive playlist on reptiles, amphibians, and especially salamanders as well. Please subscribe to my channel if you like what I do and you want to learn more about nature. Leave me a like, leave me a comment. I love answering questions from my viewers, and I respond to everyone's comments as soon as I can. So thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.